go. Okay, next up, I'm happy to have James Ramsey on our next tutorial for uh, GitLab Create. Uh, so, J James, I'll, I'll turn things over to you. Just a quick introduction and uh, tell us uh, everything about DevOps Create. Sure, thanks, Ray. Nice to meet everyone. Um, I'm the product manager for uh, the Create stage of the DevOps lifecycle. Um, so, I think the, the first thing to explain is uh, how we break things up at GitLab. Um, GitLab uh, structured around the DevOps lifecycle, and so we have different teams for each stage. Um, and I'm particularly focused on the create stage, which is how um, you create and review your code. Um, so practically, um, breaking that down into a bit more detail, um, that includes source code management. So the Git bits, um, which includes LFS, protected branches, and forking workflows. Um, create also includes code reviews, um, which merge requests, the diffs, highlighting, approvals. Um, so yeah, those are probably the most obvious areas of the create stage of the DevOps lifecycle. But also part of it is the web IDE, which is a really great way to um, write code in the GitLab interface, um, particularly if you spot a small change or want to work on a project that um, you don't have on your local computer or you're on a tablet, you can use the web IDE to make changes and commit them. We've also got snippets, wikis, um, search, so code search. Um, and coming later in the year, we're also looking to include uh, design management processes um, because the UX design process is a really important part of creating new applications and creating new features um, and also live coding. So making it easy to collaboratively code in real time with um, your peers and colleagues um, and also work on wikis in real time. So that's a really exciting thing that we're looking forward to later in the year. So that's create in a nutshell. Um, and there's lots of, so I guess to to help you think about ways that you might want to get started and contributing to create aspects of uh, GitLab, uh, there's there's really a lot of places you could start. And so I thought the best way to ex to share that would be to show you some recent contributions um, by people who um, added things to GitLab. And so the, the first one is around displaying empty diffs. And this is an example of a pretty small front end change. Um, there's lots of issues where you can um, you search for create uh, issues in the issue board, um, you can find UI polish issues like this. And so this one, they noticed that um, empty files in the diff view didn't really look right. Um, and so what they did is they improved um, the way empty files look. Um, a similar sort of change maybe for people more backend inclined with more Rails experience. Um, someone recently updated the way the target um, and source branch selectors worked for branch filtering. Um, and so that makes when you're doing comparisons much easier. It shows, it allows you to filter with regexes and stars and globs and things like that. So really nice improvement for someone who is more familiar with Rails code. But then anyone can contribute to GitLab. It's not just people who know Vue.js or are familiar with Ruby. Um, Documentation is a really important part of GitLab and um, there's lots of improvements you can make to the documentation. Um, so a recent improvement to the documentation, um, I think in 11.8, so not even released yet, um, someone wrote step-by-step -step instructions how to set up push mirroring with another GitLab instance. Um, and here are some other examples of maybe a little bit more complicated um, improvements that you might be inspired by. Um, in the web IDE, someone added uh, the keyboard shortcut to quickly commit whatever's in the editor. So you can now click command enter or control enter on a Windows computer and commit whatever you've um, got in front of you. Um, and just live on gitlab.com as a few days ago is a new summary of who's a, how many approvals there are on a merge request. Um, so this, this nicely brings together some front end and back end elements. Um, I think Brendan, if you watched this morning's um, Verify uh, video, Brendan talked about Git push 
uh, the git push option to skip a CI build. Um, this one's really back end for those who don't like to use the front end that makes it really easy to skip a CI job. Um, and there's all sorts of opportunities to find features like this in GitLab. If you don't want to touch the front end, you can just build nice little back end features like this. Um, and then a more complex example of a feature that was built by a community member um, is instance level license templates. So file templates that can be specified for an entire instance and then they now appear in the uh, file template dropdown. So for licenses, GitLab CI YAMLs, um, other kinds of file templates. So hopefully these give you um, a bit of an overview of some of the smaller, simpler little issues that you might wanna think about working on um, to some of the more complicated issues. And these are these all these improvements um, sit within the create area of uh, GitLab. So where would you get started? Um, if you're looking for a first time contribution, documentation or small UI polish issues are a great way to get started. Um, you might not need to change more than 10 lines to make a really useful change to GitLab. Um, if you're looking for something more complicated and a little bit more exciting and you're an experienced programmer who's um, wanting to do something really interesting, um, these are uh, two suggestions I, um, wanted to put out there we currently have file templates for uh, GitLab CI licenses and things like that but it'd be really useful to have completely custom file templates so that might be useful if you've got a blog and you wanted to have different blog file templates so when you create a new blog post you could just use the little drop down in GitLab to create a template Another example of a, a feature that um, could be really interesting to implement is code owners. So we introduced GitLab code owners in Enterprise Edition and it's, all, it's very focused on integration with merge request approvals, but we have an open issue about bringing the non-approvals part of it down to GitLab Community Edition. So that would be interesting because it involves um, porting some EE code down to GitLab CE. Um, and that would be a really exciting feature. Um, Ray, do you have any questions or things that you'd like me to share perhaps? No, yeah, I mean, just wanted to add on the custom file template. I think that's one of the issues that we highlighted for this hackathon. We're encouraging people to uh, uh, submit a merge request and there's an extra prize associated with that. It doesn't look like anyone sort of volunteered yet, but so that one's still open. Um, so mm -hmm. if anyone wants to work on it, just uh, just add a comment there and mention either me or, or James and then we can assign that issue to um, that individual. Uh, so that one's mm. obviously open. Um, and uh, so I, I guess, I mean, this is a, I mean, a similar question I asked uh, other presenters like this morning. Um, I mean, obviously like it creates a big part of uh, GitLab, mm -hmm. but if people have questions about features or suggestions, I mean, what's what's the best way to do that? I guess the one, one place to start is look for issues and if uh, there's like a similar already already filed, but how is, how is, how is, what's the best way to sort of uh, reach out to you or uh, people on the, on the create team to have a sort of discussion on, uh, questions about features or requests they have. Um, yeah, um, if you've got an idea, mm -hmm. check the check the issue board because there might be other people who've also had the same idea. So um, there there can often be some notes and feedback already out there on the idea. Um, but if not, just create an issue and ping someone. But I guess so. I'm probably the best person to mention. Um, also, there's, there's a bunch of engineers on the Create team. So if you go to the GitLab team page, you can search for different people in different teams. And so that way you could ping some engineers if you wanted to ask them some, some input on how to get started on something. Um, but also we want everyone to be able to contribute. And so if you have an idea, you don't need permission to create a merge request. You can just get started on your idea and open a merge request. Um, and if it makes GitLab better, like that's what open source is all about. So you don't need approval from someone. You don't need to have a fancy proposal of what feature you're going to build. Um, if you're building something that you think is useful, um, feel free to open an issue or feel free just to open a merge request and propose something. 
Um, that's the brilliance of open source. Yeah, yeah I, I think James, you, you showed, I mean, several good examples of community contributions. And I mean, we see the, those coming in. Uh, I mean, I see at least several of them across different product areas. And what I typically do is I try to triage them and put it in front of different product managers and engineering managers. And uh, I mean, across the board, I think people, at least within a couple of days, like someone will respond to it. Um, so yep. one of the things I'd like to uh, let community members know is that it's a completely fair game to ping people within GitLab. I mean, we're all Absolutely. part of the community. Um, so, I mean, the, the reason why I'm doing that is, is so that community members know who to ping if they have questions about that specific MR or, or you know, product yeah. features going forward. So, um, yeah. And as a, someone who's wanting to contribute the first time, you shouldn't have to know who to ping to get an answer. So right. GitLab will sort that out. Ray or someone else will notice. Um, right have a new merge request and then we'll rope in the people that need to, to get involved. Um, be that to give you a code review, answer questions you have on maybe um, handling some edge case or even just getting feedback on where to get started. Um, it's totally okay to sort of grab an issue and be like, I want to work on this issue, um, but can you give me some tips on like which files and which data models I need to look at to, to get started. All right. Cool. Uh, okay, I think we have, uh, I just typed a question on the chat. If people have any questions they can type in, uh, I think people are muted. Uh, I guess, I mean, one other thing I, I probably want to ask of you, James, is uh, you probably have a, like a section on the vision page for 2019, right? Yeah. That's worth sharing. Um, uh, did I link it? No, I must have deleted that slide. Um, I can share my screen and pull up the vision page. Cool. And here we go. Where did Zoom go? I'm going to stop share. Yeah, so as I mentioned, create the create category is pretty pretty broad. Uh, or the, so the create stage of the DevOps lifecycle is broad with lots of different categories um, from source code management, search, code review, etc. Um, but some of the things we're working on at the moment um, that might be interesting is where we're making a start on group merge requests, trying to link merge requests to each other. So for applications that span multiple repositories, maybe have a service architecture, um, making that easier. Um, we've been working on making code review more holistic um, and that's there's a whole range of improvements coming over the next year trying to improve that. So we've made it possible to comment on unchanged lines in changed files and we want to get to the point where you can comment on any line of any file in a merge request because code reviews shouldn't just be around the code that has changed, the code that hasn't changed is also very important. Um, we're just about to ship Smarter Squash and Merge, um, a range of improvements to the web IDE. I mentioned design management is something we'll be making a start on. Um, so expect to see the first iterations in the next few months. Um, but yeah, improvements around forking um, and streamlining that is something that we really want to do, um, as well as making commit messages part of the code review. Um, we think that commit messages are really important in making a repository and a software application that has a long lifespan. If you don't understand how the code came to be the way it is, it's very hard to um, improve it. And then one that's not actually on this list, I don't think that we're very excited about is we're about to start working on confidential merge requests in the next couple of uh, releases as well. So um, that'll, that'll help open source projects that need to fix vulnerabilities um, that will streamline that process because currently you'd have to have a completely private copy of the project to be able to do that confidentially um, and that's something that we find frustrating at GitLab when we ship security updates um, it's the same problem for many other open source projects and that's something we're working towards as well was there a question in the chat that i saw 
Uh, yeah, I think uh, Gokhan was saying it was okay, but I think Aaron joined a bit late, but Aaron, I'm not sure if you have any questions or, um, or comments. Okay, um, I guess. No Aaron's worries, glad, glad to have you with us. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I guess just to wrap up the end of the year, um, live live programming is um, a really sort of interesting and challenging objective. Um, so kind of like Google Docs slash Adam Telly type in the web ID and wikis and trying to make um, real time collaboration um, possible. Um, and then the other the other one, which is really interesting for on-premises uh, installations or self-hosted installations of GitLab is distributed merge requests. Um, we want to make it possible to send merge requests from one GitLab instance to another. Um, so if you have a private GitLab server at your organization, company or university say, and you've got a fork of a popular open source project and you find a bug in it, um, you may not, want to fix it publicly upstream immediately. You may want to make a patch for that bug or issue um, and continue shipping your application. But eventually you want to upstream that bug fix and it's kind of difficult to do that. Um, you need to take your change and move it from one, uh, one place to another. And we want to have a streamlined process so that you can do your code review process locally with your team, make sure that you haven't leaked anything confidential maybe um, that was in your test suite or commit message for example and then publish that merge request onto the upstream instance. So um, I think that'll be a really amazing feature and start breaking down some of the walls between um, self-hosted Git servers um, that have maybe built up over the years as people have become more enthusiastic about merge request workflows, which are inherently currently stuck on a single server. So that, yeah, but this is where we're heading in uh, 2019. And this page it gets kept up to date through the year. Um, and there's a lot more detail uh, for each one of these categories inside of the create DevOps stage. You can go and find uh, a more detailed vision um, and see what we'll specifically be working on. Um, drill down and maybe even find an issue that you want to work on if we're not going to work on it soon enough. Um, and you can always propose taking things in a completely different direction. Um, that's the brilliance of. Uh, open source. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for the details. I like having these um, uh, vision pages for each, each product groups. It makes it transparent to uh, community members at what uh, GitLab product teams are working on. So. No worries. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, so, yeah, so if there are no questions online, I think we can wrap this up. But uh, uh, we'll also put this on YouTube hopefully in the next uh, couple of hours and so people can catch a recording if they weren't able to join us. Thanks James not only for leading the presentation but also uh, preparing the materials ahead of time so definitely um, uh, I'm sure community members will appreciate it. No worries. All right well thanks very Have much. Have a good day. Happy Hackathon. Bye thanks.